they went to this, he and uh, Ellen went to this other talk at, I don't know if they'll be back uh, for the start. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, let me say again to the organizers, uh, thanks so much for the opportunity. It's really been an honor uh, and a pleasure to speak here. Everyone's been a, uh <coughs> uh, it's been a fantastic audience and a great opportunity to talk about something obviously I'm mildly interested in. Um, so uh, so I, I'm, I'm diverging from the uh, initial plan. I was gonna talk about the even filtration today uh, in this talk, and I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to do instead something a little bit closer to uh, to Akim's lectures, and um, so this lecture is going to be called uh, the K1 localization of K theory of Z mod P to the N is zero. Um, really rolls off the tongue, and this is a theorem uh, of of several other people. Okay, so. Uh, First of all, uh, Bach, Klaus, and Matthew proved this using techniques from prismatic cohomology and quasi-syntomic descent. They basically proved that K-theory of OC mod P to the N is zero, really actually by using some sort of prismatic envelope type arguments. And then they, then they make some descent argument to get this. And then it's also proved by um, Lund, M Matthew, Meyer Tama, uh, using different, more chromatically fav flavored techniques. And I'm going to give a, a different proof that sort of falls out of this prismatic envelope de description that we have of the syntomic cohomology. Um, in fact, I'm going to prove something stronger. I'm going to prove something about the exact degree of nil potence of this V1 operator. Um, and that's a sort of interesting result, and I'm not sure that, uh, you know, that there have been sort of comparable results uh, in the literature before. So let me just start uh, with a very brief amount of background on, uh, on, lo on this sort of localization. Um, uh, so localization. Um, so we have this category of spectra, and that's really the natural structure that things like K-theory have. These are, not, uh, these are not chain complexes. They're not equivalent to chain complexes, typically. And on spectra, one has all of these homology theories. And so uh, the one that we're going to be interested in is the localization with respect to K-theory. So um, let me explain that one. Uh, L1 spectra. Um, so there's a localization functor. So this is spectra where I invert the following weak equivalences. Th this is uh, maps of spectra x to y such that ku tensor f is an equivalence. Okay, we're localizing at the ku homology equivalences. Okay, that's some set of maps, and we can invert them. Okay, and so that's what this, uh, that's what this category is. This gives us a localization functor, namely, uh, I can go here and I can include back in and that induces this L1 functor uh, uh, on spectra. Um, another, if you think about derived categories and so forth, what we're doing is killing the sort of category of KUA cyclics, i.e. the full subcategory of spectra, where when you smash with KU, you just get zero, or tensor with KU, you get zero, okay? So this is, uh, this is the, the, the L1 localization localization at KU. Yeah? No? Uh, right. But it's about to be. Um, I also have uh, the K1 localization, where there's an implicit prime P. Um, and this is localization in the same sense at KU mod P. This is, this is capital K, capital U, so it's periodic K theory modulo P. And so again, what we do is we invert the equivalences, which the, the, the maps, which are equivalences on KU mod P homology. Okay, that's, some, uh, that's something we can do, um, and uh, we get this localization functor. 
And this theorem is about what happens when we apply this localization functor to, uh, to algebraic K theory of Z mod P to the N. Let me just uh, outline three facts that we'll use throughout the course of the day um, about, about these. <coughs> so, and I will, I will, uh, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna prove, prove any of these. Um, so the first one is that, uh, we, we're not gonna need this one for a little while, that if I take X and rationalize it, that's the same as the rationalization of the, k of the, uh, the uh, KU localization. Second one, um, the K1 local, uh, uh, the if I take, if I take the KU localization and I P complete it, then this is the K1 localization. So in the, in the P complete world, uh, there's no particular difference between this, k this KU localization uh, or L1 localization and the, and the, the, the K1 or KU mod P localization. Um, and then, uh, and then the third point, um, is this, so how do you check that something is zero? So we're going to want to prove that something is zero. Um, so LK1 of X is zero, if and only if, um, well, I guess I'm just going to tell you one recipe for, for sort of computing part of its KU homology. So if and only if I take the spectrum X and I mod out by P, and then there's going to be a V1 self map, oops, and if I invert that self map and I get zero, then, uh, then the K1 localization is zero. Now, it's important, this is sort of a confusing point. This is not, in general, a recipe for the K1 localization, right? It's a recipe for giving a sufficient uh, criterion for the K1 homology to vanish, okay, which is enough. So what that means, th this is enough to, sh to prove that the natural map from X to zero is a K1 equivalence, and so that must mean that in the localization they're equivalent, i.e., that the K1 localization of X is zero. And one has to be a little bit careful here, depending on which prime you're at. Uh, technically speaking, um, really, uh, this, v w this, this is true kind of, oh yeah, and here, what's V1? V1 is a class in pi 2 p minus 2 of the sphere spectrum mod p, which is called the mod p more spectrum. But if I really want to be this precise, then this is for odd primes, and um, I get V1 to the fourth, in pi eight for S mod two, for, P, for P equals two. But this distinction I is not gonna matter for us because uh, in the case that we're gonna compute, uh, these, uh, even V1 will exist at the prime two. So there won't be a, there won't be a, a particular subtlety there. Let me give a quick warning for zo those who haven't seen this before. These are not ring spectra. They're not even E1 ring spectra. Um, for P at least uh, five, these are c kind of homotopy commutative, uh, homotopy associative ring spectra, but like there's not even a multiplication on S mod two. So maybe you wanna be a little bit wary about what inverting this even really means. Um, and uh, there's various ways around that. That's not gonna really play an important role in this talk, but let me just take the opportunity to, to remark, just because I think it's a cool theorem, um, and so I can embarrass someone in the audience, hopefully. Uh, so uh, amazingly, sort of S mod eight and S mod P squared for odd primes uh, are E1 ring spectra. So one can play play around with this. This is a theorem of what? Well, and this is a theorem of of uh, Birkeland. Uh, so I just think that's cool. This was sort of a confusing point in the history of K theory for a long time. You know how to make these localizations, how to make them precise. Um, for us, that's not going to really matter, but uh, I still think it's interesting. Um, Oh, and, and let me just say why this particular degree, you probably remember that the first P torsion in the stable homotopy groups of spheres is in degree 2P minus 3, okay? And so then this is a Bockstein of that, of that. Um, 
in the mod p in the mod p homotopy. Okay. Any questions? So now, um, right. So now I'm going to explain that this V1 class really exists in the mod p syntomic cohomology of Zp itself. In other words, it's non-zero, so i.e. sort of V1 is non-zero in K2p minus 2 of Zp with Fp coefficients, and that's uh, equivalent or isomorphic to Tc2p minus 2 Zp uh, with Fp coefficients. This has a contribution from exactly this cohomology group using the, the motivic spectral sequence for Tc. And, um, and we can, we can uh, and, and for odd primes, this is the only possible contribution. Okay, so then that's sort of a unique corresponding class here. Uh, for P equals two, you might, you might in principle have to worry about an extension. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't worry about it. Um, uh, but there's a class, and we're gonna be able to right now just compute this class algebraically, okay? So this is a fun, this is a fun exercise. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to compute an algebraic representative in terms of prismatic cohomology of this class. Once we have that algebraic representative, we can play around with it in, in the prismatic envelopes that Achim's been talking about. Okay. So, um, right, oh, and sorry, uh, may, maybe this is a little un unclear. Really, it's in eight, the degree zero cohomology of this, I should have said. So in general, uh, Z, the, the weight I syntomic cohomology of Zp uh, is concentrated uh, sort of cohomologically in degrees minus 2 and minus 1 for I positive. And that means that the Fp syntomic cohomology, which just to make this clear, this is the, com this is the well, these are actually complexes. This is uh, the cofiber of multiplication by P on the uh, p-adic syntomic cohomology. And what could happen here is, well, in principle, torsion in degree minus one could get bumped up into degree zero, okay? Or bumped, well, not a great way of putting it, okay. Um, well, it's really in dfp of minus two to zero, okay? And indeed, what we're gonna compute is we're gonna compute a little bit of this degree zero cohomology. And uh, the method's just going to be via descent. Um, oh, did I actually? Yeah. The method's going to be via descent. So remember, we have this, this Broekissen descent um, uh, sort of diagram, um, which is giving us uh, the, um, the prismatic cohomology. Uh, OK, let me, let me just introduce a little bit of notation. Let me call uh, sort of a, uh, a a sub s uh, the the ring z p adjoins z zero to z s. So this is the s term uh, completed of the check complex of z p to z p adjoins z zero. Okay, so I take the check complex, I complete with respect to the augmentation ideal, and I get these uh, I get these uh, z p's these ASs. So let me just use this for a moment. We're only going to use a couple of them. Um, and so this is going to be ZP over A0, um, n more than or equal to I, oops, where I kissed and twist by, by I, uh, prismatic cohomology, Frobenius twisha, ZP over A1, and then higher degree terms that, as Akim explained, basically aren't going to matter. Here I have, uh, the, the non Nygaard uh, part, just the prismatic cohomology. And what, we, what we've observed is that uh, the totes of these diagrams are computing the absolute prismatic cohomology. 
So this is absolute prismatic cohomology. Roy Kiss and Twisted by I. This is the Nygaard filtration on that. And then uh, there are CAN and PHI maps. And we've really just been discussing the fiber of this term, which is the absolute syntomic cohomology. But we can also take the vertical fibers here and then take the limit. That gives us something that uh, one might as well call relative syntomic cohomology. And then just for kind of the tote of this is the tote of this. Oh, and of course, I meant to do this mod p, and I forgot. Uh, so mod p. And so what does that tell us? Um, we know the location of these. So all oh right, the, 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 the terms. These terms are all discrete. Everywhere here, this is discrete. That means that these terms are, are at worst, concentrated in, in degrees 0 and minus 1 homologically, right? 0 minus 1, 0 minus 1, 0 minus 1. So in other words, the sort of top homology of this uh, is just in degree 0. But that means, and, and the same would be true with FP coefficients, uh, because in fact, these are all p torsion 3 everywhere. Okay, so even mod p, these are all discrete. Okay, so what that tells us is the following, that there's an exact sequence. If I'm interested in the degree i syntomic cohomology of Zp, this includes, this fits into the, an exact sequence where I map into the uh, degree 0 syntomic cohomology relative A0, um, and then uh, sort of D0 minus D1. That's an exact sequence. So in order to compute this cohomology, the top cohomology, or the, the, the top homology, um, well, I'm going to be able to just compute compute this. And I know that V1 exists in the appropriate weight here already. So what I'm doing right now is just finding a specific representative of it. Any questions? Now let's just have some fun and actually compute this. Okay? So what what is this? This is the motivic. This these terms uh, give you the motivic filtration on t the relative T C of Z P over the sphere adjoined Z uh, with F P coefficients. And I know we, uh, we've we've already discussed and explained the picture for this T C minus. Well, okay, I'm going to do it first with Zp coefficients. It's a little bit clearer. Can minus phi uh, t the Tp of Zp uh, over S adjoined Z. Uh, yeah, Zp coefficients. So the fiber of this is, is this. Okay. So now what we can do is actually just compute uh, this. Um, the homotopy ring, uh, this is the vid vector, uh, well, Zp, we're doing Zp. <laughs> Zp power series Z adjoin uh, variables, let's call them V and Y, modulo V, Y, minus a chosen Eisenstein polynomial, and I'm going to uh, normalize things so that this is Z plus P. And let's just call that D uh, to, to correspond to, uh, to Akim's talk. 
so we can we can set everything up so that uh, uh, that there are generators of the degree two and degree minus two cohomology uh, with with this property. And now, what is TP? TP. Uh, This is uh, this is just this ring is isomorphic to what we get when we invert v there. This is in Bob Morosholtza too, and they compute canon phi. So basically, let me say what happens. So can is well, it's zp linear. That's stupid here. Okay, so uh, can can of uh, well, a, a, a general element in degree 2i is of the form y to the i. Um, and the canonical map uh, sends this to f of z times, well, yi must be this d to the i times v to the minus i. Um, and so then in, in this ring, this is times d to the i uh, v to the minus i. And the Frobenius of f of z yi uh, appropriately sort of normalized here is f of, z f of z to the, well, it's the Frobenius of f uh, times v to the minus i. But this Frobenius of f, since we're working over zp, the Frobenius is the identity map. And so this is, uh, this is the same as f of z to the p, because the Frobenius is constant on the coefficients. Okay. So let's work out what the what the syntomic complex, this relative syntomic complex is. Well, well, ZPI of ZP relative to S join Z. Actually, I don't really sorry uh, relative to A zero. Um, so that's exactly what's coming out of what the homotopy groups in degree two I. Okay. So this is the fiber of a map. Uh, I'll, I'll write it like this. It's W K. Uh, sorry, ZP adjoint, ZP adjoint Z dot Y to the I, ZP adjoint Z dot V to the I, and this sends F of Z <coughs> to can minus phi here is going to be uh, D to the I, F of Z minus F of Z to the P times V to the I. So here we have a specific map. Uh, we have like names for all of the elements, and we know how this map looks, what it does, what it does on all of the power series. These are just discrete. So this, this is a map of abelian groups, and this complex is the f the fiber, the homotopy fiber of that map of abelian groups. So it has, at worst, cohomology in degrees zero and one. Erase, so please ask questions while I do. I did not. Turns out that they're all zero. Yeah, maybe it's worth saying. None of we haven't said it. The 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 negative syntomic complexes uh, turn out to all be evaluate to zero. Um, that's a calculation you can do. I, I recommend, in fact, that you do it in this particular case, um, prove that this can minus phi is an isomorphism on the negative degree classes. Not a difficult exercise. <laughs> Other questions? I guess I'll take that as a sign that this is all pretty clear. Um, and so now let's just think, now let's do this mod p, okay? Mod p, things get even easier. Note that d is congruent to p modulo p, right? We, we set d, uh, um, z. <coughs> Okay, just making sure everyone's paying attention. 
Okay, so now when we let's compute this FP syntomic complex, this is the fiber of FP adjoins Z, FP adjoins Z, and this takes a power series F of Z and sends it to uh, to Z to the I F of Z minus F of Z to the P. Okay. Now if you work out what happens, the only way that you can get something in degree zero, right, we're interested in computing uh, the degree zero cohomology of this, so all we care about is the kernel of this map. Okay, the kernel of this can minus phi map. If you think what happens on a monomial, uh, z to the a, this is sending it to z to the i plus a minus z to the pi, uh, z to the pa, and in order for a monomial to be in the kernel, what that s tells you is that um, that a has to be equal to i over p minus one. Well, that means that for a monomial to be in the kernel, we have to have that p minus one divides i. Okay, this is only possible, and well, it happens if and only if. So this is zero if and only if. Uh, uh, well. So, so the only the only possible solution is this one, and indeed you can see that in fact, by just looking at lowest terms, that the only way to have something in the kernel is for it to be a monomial, and it's exactly this monomial. Okay, so that means that H zero of F P I of Z P of Z P is isomorphic to well, it's F P P times uh, sort of this class uh, z to the a. Um, actually, sorry. Um, yeah, right. It's maybe better. It's maybe better to think of this y to the i formally as being as being d to the i. The way that this is uh, is going in here. Well, okay. Um, uh, sorry, sorry. So I over P minus one or zero. So here this is if P minus one does not divide uh, does not divide I. This is if P minus one does divide I. And now maybe the point is this is this is kind of the element. So this Z to the I over P minus one is sort of is in is the element in this Nygaard filtration, but now we're going to want to consider it in uh, in in the prismatic cohomology, and when we do that, it's uh, it's this term, z to the i uh, i over p to the i times d to the i, okay, in in the prismatic cohomology. One more time. Ah, yeah, thanks. Okay. So we've just computed the the top, uh, the well, the degree zero uh, relative syntomic cohomology of ZP, and we see it's concentrated in degrees divisible by p minus one, and we have this this specific uh, this specific element generated by it. So let me call v. Uh, I'll do this on a new board. So let's call V1 in the degree P minus 1 syntomic cohomology of ZP. That's going to be this class, which is uh, Z times D to the P minus 1. It's a specific element, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. No, no, let me just say that this is an A0. But um, we're now gonna we're gonna we now want to know what power of this vanishes. But it's enough to compute that in the relative term because uh, the cohomology of the absolute terms injects in degree zero. Okay. So, ah. 
it's just i equals p minus 1 case. Okay, so what I'm saying here, so, okay, so, so what we've done is we've just picked out a specific element in the, in the syntomic cohomology. It's in the kernel, we see that the kernel is fp, and now I'm saying for outside knowledge, we know that this has to be the v1 coming from homotopy theory. Or, yeah, so, uh, that's, that's, uh, I guess you'll just have to believe me. But now, in order to, uh, now I want to show that some power of V1 vanishes in the absolute syntomic cohomology. But since the H0 of absolute injects into H0 of relative, <laughs> it's enough to show that the power vanishes here, right? Vanishes here if and only if it van some power vanishes here. People happy with that? Okay, uh, not not. I feel like I feel like at some point I did something and now people are unhappy. Um, okay, and so let me just uh, let me just uh, uh, write down. We also have v1 to the j. This is in fp uh, p to the j minus j uh, of this relative syntomic complex, and we 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 can write this. This is z to the j times d to the to the pj minus j and let me just note that since we're uh, since d is congruent to z modulo p this is the same as z this is congruent to uh, z to the j z to the pj minus j which is z to the pj okay so now we're going to now we're going to compute and play around with this um, and see see what see what happens so, um, so I'll call this filtration explosion. Um, and what what we're yeah, I, I should stop now. <laughs> so what we're going to prove is that a certain power of this is infinitely close to zero in the Nygaard filtration. And now we're going to use that we can compute prismatic co the syntomic cohomology with the Nygaard complete objects. And so that's it's zero in the Nygaard completion. And so the infinite closeness will imply that it's uh, um, that it's zero. Okay. And so the theorem, do I want to just say this now? Um, yeah, I guess I did. So let's let uh, the P analog of N be p to the n minus 1 over p minus 1, sometimes written as this. And the theorem is that uh, this is the exact, um, the, so the exact order of nil potents of v1 in the BM in the motivic associated graded uh, of the BMS filtration on ZP, which is this direct sum of the ZPIs, is exactly is V is V1 to the P analog of N. Is the P analog of N. <laughs> okay. So that means that this specific power vanishes in the appropriate weight syntomic cohomology, and that no lower power vanishes. That's the claim. Do I mean z mod p to the n? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Right, it, it probably should depend on n, for example. <laughs> Thanks, okay. And so now we're going to compute the powers of this in the uh, in using the uh, using the elements of this prismatic envelope that Akim explained to us. <coughs> okay. And uh, oh wait, uh, somewhere I thought I had uh, some of those elements to remind you of. So, oh yeah, let me just say, like, it's kind of going to be clear 
that the Nygaard weight of this element, right, is, is going to go off to infinity as, as, th as we take higher and po higher powers. Okay. But that's not enough to actually prove the result because the Nygaard weight I contributing to syntomic cohomology also gets bigger and bigger. So, uh, so we'll have to actually do, uh, do something. And let me just remind you of what happened in Akim's lectures. Um, so we're, we're now interested in, uh, so this, this V1 to the J is in N more than or equal to P to the J minus J. That's kind of uh, right uh, of, of this relative prismatic cohomology. Um, so now we're gonna, I'm going to just abuse notation and write V1 for the same element in R mod A0, where R is equal to um, Z mod P to the N. And I'm additionally going to use the fact that there's, that this prism is oriented to sort of get rid of and ignore the Broekissen twist, which is admissible since I'm now only doing something that's just about this relative prismatic cohomology, and I'm not trying to see how that descends to absolute pris prismatic cohomology, where I'd have to take into account the compatibility of these diagrams with a trivialization of the Broekissen twist. Um, and we know what this is. So this is isomorphic to a specific prismatic envelope, A0, um, well, um, Z to the PN over Z to the P plus P. Because uh, it's a Frobenius twist of the, of the, of the prismatic cohomology. So that's, the, that's A0, Z to the N over Z plus P. Uh, and then base changed along Frobenius with A0, okay? Um, and now we know generators for this. We know generators for the, for the Nygaard filtration. We have these elements Fu inside N more than or equal to P to the U, um, uh, relative prismatic cohomology R over A0. Um, uh, let's see. And what else do we have? Well, D is in N more than or equal to 1. That's always going to be the case. And what else do we want? Oh, yeah, we know. OK, I've got to say just a little bit more about this before I start the proof properly. Um, um, right, we know that this, we know that N more than or equal to, how did I write? Well, yeah, PJ minus J. Uh, has a has a basis uh, up, up to p completion of elements consisting of uh, d to the c products of f u u at least zero uh, e u where the e uh, let's see where is, let's see c is more than or equal to zero zero is less than or equal to e u is less than p and then c plus the sum of uh, p uh, did I <laughs> even write this down? Oh, right, P to the U, E U, yes. Uh, well, this should be at least Nygaard weight uh, P J minus J, so that's P J minus J. Okay, so that's just a little bit of what of what um, of what Akim said, and now we need one more slight uh, additional ingredient, uh, which which has not come up yet, um, and which I'm just going to black box. Uh, it follows from our analysis of the relations between the various Fi's. And that additional element is that when I take Fu and raise it to the pth power, um, this is a, a unit multiple of D to the Pu plus 1 uh, times Fu plus 1. Okay, so remember that as in Akim's talk, this means unit multiple. And note that this is congruent to z to the p to the u plus one times f u plus one. Okay, so now we're gonna now we're gonna play a little bit uh, a sort of uh, some sort of combinatoric game um, to reduce our complicated expression, which is really going to be v one to this power, and then we're gonna see uh, see something interesting happen. Any questions before I before I do that? Yes. Have I switched the other board? I have not. Okay. I 
only talked about this recording. Um, okay. Any other questions? Okay, so let's get started on the proof. So what is, okay, so proof. So V1, what is it in this ring? Well, it's, it's Z dot D to the P minus one, uh, and that's congruent to Z to the P, uh, since we're working modulo P. And so V1 to the N, to the P analog of N, that's Z to the P times N, the p times the P analog of N. And I can write that just multiplying that expression by p as the product uh, of, um, of z to the p, z to the p squared, up to z to the p to the n. Okay, that's just an expansion of this of this number. I haven't done anything, on an anything yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to perform one step. And that step is going to consist of gathering a one z from each of these n terms. We've got n terms here. So I can rewrite this as z to the n, z to the p minus 1, z to the p squared minus 1, up to z to the p to the n minus 1. But z to the n is precisely f0. I should have written that. So I can rewrite this as uh, as f0, z to the p minus 1, z to the p to the n minus 1. And let's call this one step. And you can see what's going to happen. I'm going to repeat that one step p times. So, so, so this is just rewriting. So this will be p step. This will be repeat, you know, after p steps. We will have got. We will have done. We will have gotten to f zero to the p, z to the p minus p, z to the p squared minus p, z to the p to the n minus p. But this f this f zero to the p is a unit multiple. Uh, I get what I get z to the p back times f one. Uh, let me uh, right times f one. Just re uh, rewriting that notation up there times, uh, well, this goes away, and I still have z to the p squared minus p up to z to the p to the n minus p. So I've done p copies of this gather n elements and rewrite. And after doing p to them, I can do a second rewriting, where the f0 to the p becomes an f1. Now, if you stare at what happens, each, each sort of, OK, now let's do this p squared steps. Total. This is not p squared more. This is from the beginning. This is then f1 to the p, z to the p, z to the p squared minus p squared, z to the p cubed minus p squared, z to the p to the n minus p squared. But now I can, uh, sorry, this was an, this was an equal. Uh, and now I can rewrite this f1 to the p as f2. Uh, z to the p squared, and you see I have this back. Okay, so let me just rewrite that a little bit. So now it's z to the p, z to the p squared, z to the p cubed minus p, z to the p to the n minus p squared. That, so this is, uh, this is p squared steps. And what you see, <laughs> somehow, r this rewriting process we're able to eventually get back where we haven't touched these first terms. And then in the end, what you can get down is that this is, is fn, z to the p, z to the p squared, and in the end, z to the p to the n. This is after p to the n steps. Well, that's what we started with. So this rewriting, we rewrite, we rewrite, we rewrite, and at the end of the day, we get that our element that we started with, v1 to the n. So what this says is that v1 to the 
to the p analog of n is fn times, well, it's a unit multiple of fn times uh, v1 to the n analog of p. But fn has, has high Nygaard filtration. So what's the possible Nygaard filtration of v1? <laughs> has to be Nygaard filtration infinity. So that means it's zero in syntomic cohomology. This one? Well, you know, this has some, say this has Nygaard filtration more than or equal to I. Well, then this has Nygaard filtration more than or equal to uh, P to the N times I, <laughs> but it's the same thing. Yeah. Right, okay, good. So now, let's say that I had stopped this one step earlier. Um, should I flip these? I think. Uh, let's see. Let's say I had stopped one step earlier, and see what see what we get. So it'll be the same rewriting. Um, right, minus one, I guess. So what is that? Uh, let's write that. Let's write that as follows. Let's write it as z to the p, z to the p squared, z to the p to the n minus one, and then rewriting p to the n minus one times. Uh, we get z to the n minus 1, uh, f0 to the p minus 1, f1 to the p minus 1, f n minus 1 to the p minus 1. This is exactly one of the j possible generators <laughs> in the, in the Nygaard-associated graded uh, basis for the Frobenius twisted prismatic uh, cohomology. So this is so that y so you're having to believe the theorem that Achim stated on the board yesterday. So one of the non-zero <laughs> generators of uh, of the associated graded of the Nygaard filtration. Okay, and so it's in particular it's I mean it's non-zero. Um, that's again that's a theorem uh, uh, about the structure of that of that of that filtration, but it's, um, it shows that that's non-zero. Okay. That's a, yes. Correct. Right, because the, if you invert V1, you're, you're sort of, uh, you're getting a tall K theory, roughly speaking. It's not, no, but it's from the sphere spectrum mod p. Right, right, yeah. Elements in positive weight, in positive degree in the sphere spectrum are no potent, but the whole point is that mod p, this element v1, when you invert it, you get, you, you bit get a sum and of ku mod p. Okay, and I, I was gonna say a little bit more about that. I'm not sure if I'll have time. Any questions about, so like claiming that this is a proof that v1 is nil potent in the associated graded of uh, of uh, the BMS filtration on TC. Well, it's the associated graded, uh, if you take H0, is just, yeah, it's a ring. Mm, 
No, but if v, I mean v one, yeah, v one to this power times one is zero. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. There could be absolutely. So, so this right. This power times one is non-zero in, in the homotopy ring or the associated graded. But the, but yeah, as you said, there could be different elements in, in the in the syntomic cohomology such that when we multiply by this power, we get zero. And I mean, presumably, in fact, like v one. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to systematically study the, the filtration uh, that you get by, by V1 torsion. Um, we have not done that. So now let me just observe that this implies the original claim in the title of the talk that the K1, that the, that the, um, that the K1 local K theory of Z mod P to the N is zero. And so let's think about the difference between V1 you know, acting on uh, sort of the, the, the direct sum of the syntomic cohomologies and on the, the homotopy ring Z mod P to the N. And here I'm, uh, if one, yeah. Well, the BMS spectral sequence, oh yeah, with FP coefficients. The worst thing that could happen is, so since these complexes are all concentrated in cohomological degrees 0, 1, 2, uh, some v1 np, so this is 0 in h0 uh, fp of the appropriate way, p minus 1 times uh, the, the yeah, p analog of n. So this is, this, is, this is the bottom part of the filtration in k uh, 2 p minus 1 and uh, p analog of n, uh, z mod p to the n, fp. So there's a surjective map here. And we know it's 0 there. So a priori, it could be non-zero in the next part of the filtration, which would be a contribution from, uh, from the syntomic cohomology in uh, p minus 1, uh, P analog of n plus one, but the degree two cohomology of that. So v one could have could could be zero in this, but that could be because it's living in here. <coughs> but even if that happens, then its square will be zero, right? Because then that would have to be in even higher filtration, and there's just nothing contributing to that. Okay, so at worst. <laughs> V1 to the twice NP is zero on the K groups of Z mod P to the N uh, with FP coefficients. In fact, we s will see tomorrow from Achim that the high degree even K groups just vanish. So for, uh, for I sufficiently large, K2 I minus 2 of of z mod p to the n, but now with integral coefficients, is zero. And so that would imply that these cohomology groups are zero for large i, and so this wouldn't happen. But our bounds on when this happened um, are not quite enough to get formally that this, that, this, that this phenomenon couldn't happen. So maybe we could get better bounds, maybe not. Um, but so it could be that we don't need this too, when we're acting on the actual K groups, we don't know. It could also be there's many numbers between this number and this number. <laughs> so it could be somewhere in between in principle. Um, but uh, I, I think if we had to guess, we might guess that this, there seems to be some evidence that, that this also works on K theory, uh, but we don't know. Uh, we don't know strong enough even vanishing yet uh, for that. The, uh, yeah, okay, so that's, uh, that's that. I was going to say something about Selmer key theory because, oh, oh yeah. And so let me let me just conclude with one important corollary, um, and then I'll and I'll and I'll. End. Well, 
well, let's. Uh, <clears throat> I, I mean, um, it, okay. So right. So the question is. Um, this is a statement about the action of V1 on homotopy groups with FP coefficients. Can I say something about uh, um, uh, about whether this power of V1 is actually null homotopic as a self-map of spectra? And I think um, maybe someone cor can correct me. I think it might be a little subtle. So if P is at least five. This follows from the fact that there's a homotopy ring structure on uh, on 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 this K theory with FP coefficients. Um, for P equals two and three, uh, I'm not sure I want to hazard a hazard an exact guess at the moment. Um, so uh, maybe yeah. So let me just so so what I've said so I, I don't know if I, I said it but now uh, now the theory so the well, corollary of the theory of the main theorem is that the that the k1 local k theory of z mod p to the n is zero and if you're worried about the prime two really this maps v1 its fourth power is the v1 coming from uh, the sphere the mod two more spectrum so the nil potents here is good enough. Um, and then the next corollary is that the, that the K1 localization of the K theory of R in for any, uh, any commutative ring R is equivalent to the K1 local K theory of R1 over P. This is one of the kind of important uh, things that makes Selmer K theory into, go into a good definition. I was going to say a bit more about Selmer K theory, but I don't have time. But let me just indicate very briefly how the proof of this goes. Um, and, uh, and again, this K1, it's, it's with respect to a prime, and it's the same prime I'm inverting here. The proof is, is well, you, you, so in general, there's a fiber sequence, uh, perfect complexes of R modules sort of on P, which are P nil, P, you know, which are inverted by, uh, which are killed by inverting P. Um, so there's a fiber sequence like this, and that Im that implies that I get a fiber sequence, the k-theory of this stable infinity category, the k-theory of this stable infinity category, the k-theory of this stable infinity category, and of course k1 localization preserves fiber sequences. <coughs> so what I have to show is that this fiber term, uh, its uh, its k1 local k-theory vanishes. But what you can prove is that this perf uh, R on P is equivalent to the co-limit um, of, uh, of uh, right, modules over Z mod P to the N inside perf R on P, or maybe even perf R, really. But either way, equivalent statements. So there's a there's a tower there's a, a, a way of of realizing this. This is not immediately obvious. You have to say something about pro constancy of some towers of mapping spectra to get this equivalence of categories. But it's kind of intuitively clear. And any perfect complex of R modules, where uh, which is which is P torsion, some specific power of P will vanish. Will be actually null homotopic. And so it'll admit the structure of a Z mod P to the n module inside this category. And now the point is that the K theory of this, mod Z mod P, Z P to the N perf R, is a K Z mod P to the N module spectrum. So the K1 localization is a module over the zero ring spectrum. <laughs> okay, and so then you're done here and then you pass to the co-limit, and you're done there. I'll stop there. Thanks so much.
So the, uh, I think the question is, uh, this is a computation mod p, and why is that enough? But this is only a statement modulo p. This v1 nil potence only makes sense on the mod p k theory, because v1 is really a class from the from the mod p Moore spectrum, right? V1, this v class v1 is in pi two minus two p minus two of the sphere mod p for odd p, and it's just not. It's not. One could do something if you had all p roots of unity, <laughs> and you profinitely completed. Then you could kind of using bo using uh, using uh, Thomson type methods, you could end up with a class in kind of beta in K two, like say with Z P, uh, uh, yeah, oh the it, the cyclotomic extension, profinitely completed. <laughs> There's a class beta, and its p minus first power would reduce mod p to this one, and so then you could speak of, uh, you could also think about this, uh, you know, in this setting where you inverted this class beta for algebras over this, and then p completed. That would be some sort of integral statement, um, but it's a bit. I guess it's a bit different. Thank you.